Hello, church. You know we're in serious times now. The coronavirus is affecting everyone. It's affecting businesses. Springfield, a town of about 340,000 people, is now in lockdown for 30 days. Uh, essential services can remain open. People are asked to stay home unless employed or in need of essential services. We're already feeling the economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic. Essential goods are scarce. Store shelves are bare. Uh, deliveries are not being made to warehouses to supply their chain of stores. Incoming goods from other countries are being blocked. Uh, restaurants are closed except for drive through and many restaurants don't have a drive through option. Other non-essential services are closed. That means employees, most of whom have been trying to live on minimum, minimum wage, will have no income at all. Their bills will not be paid to companies that are in need of their money. Economic collapse is a real possibility. Um, now, I'm not going on with that. It's, don't, don't be concerned. Dire predictions of ap apocalyptic proportions, though, do abound. Fear is beginning to grip the populace. Fear of not having enough. You saw that with the uh, run on toilet paper. As ridiculous as that looked, uh, people were buying cartloads of toilet paper. Um, so that's causing a problem. People that don't have, they have a fear of not having enough. They have a fear of not being able to get health care. They have a fear of contracting the disease and dying. Fear is a monster. It does not bow to logic. In fact, fear is its own worst enemy. It causes irrational behavior. As people's fear grows, they see the shortages of things already mentioned. They will panic and do things they never would have thought of doing in calmer times. These kinds of actions will only increase the panic among the populace. So how can you avoid this? Most of those who are watching this video, I assume, are the more mature type and will not immediately succumb to the panic. However, none of us are perfect and none of us are immortally strong. We all have our limitations. Each one of us can only be strong for so long. So what can you do? Well, the first thing that I recommend is to limit your news intake. My goodness, people are feeding on this stuff. If you must stay abreast of what is happening, choose just two trusted sources for your news. One of those may be a live update on the virus and the other your local news station. In my mind, you have absolutely no need to know what is going on in other parts of the world or our country, unless of course you're in a leadership position. Some will say this is burying my head in the sand. I don't think so. Think about it. We are essentially quarantined at this, at this stage. That means we're stuck inside of our house. So we should be inside. We already know the virus is growing. Why do we need to know how many new cases there are in some other part of the world? That news drags us down. It adds to the scariness of the situation, but it does nothing to help it, the problem, or ourselves. Now, we also know that the mainstream media has more opinion than fact at this time, and what facts they do show are often skewed to what they are trying to promote. Why would you want to feed your mind with the fear that is being promulgated throughout the land? Another thing you can do is to try to be of service to those who are weak. Paul tells us that those who are strong ought to bear with the infirmities of the weak. The weak in this instance includes those functioning out of fear as well as the physically and emotionally weak. You could call shut-ins and encourage them. You could offer to go to the store for them. Another thing you can do is to call your friends you know that are strong and not giving into the fear. They need encouragement just as much as anyone else they need it before their emotional bucket runs out. I learned years ago that people in leadership, those who appear to be strong, they need encouragement because they, they run on a lot of strength, but eventually they run out of juice. Another thing you could do is to put your spiritual practice at the forefront of your activities. Christians, Muslims, and Jews should pray. Buddhists should meditate. Whatever your spiritual practice is for bringing peace and harmony, do it. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Be a peacemaker. Finally, let's connect for just a moment right here. Comment on this video with any thoughts you may have. If your city is in some form of lockdown, 
let us know. Tell us the name of the city and the state that you're in, maybe even the population so we see what's going on. And after all is said and done, tonight, go to sleep with a smile on your face, knowing you've survived to see another day. Have fun. God bless.